Hey, Josie with Queen My Pawn. I'm going to talk about how to defend against unsound sacrifices. So let's look at a game. I just played this game on Leechas against someone about my strength. This was a 3-0 game, so things happen pretty quick. And if you sacrifice a piece in Blitz, there are chances to win, but it has to be a strong sacrifice still. Here's the idea is that people in Blitz don't know how to defend very well because they don't consider all of their resources. So they might miss something good. And then the player that sacrificed a piece because of the shock value and the initiative wins the game. But it has to be accurate enough that it's actually close to the king at least. Because if it's not close to the king, the sacrifice will be easy to defend. Anyways, the game started e4, e6, d4, d5. I recommend e takes d5. The game could transpose into a Scandinavian. This position could be reached also after d, I mean e4, d5, e takes d5, queen takes d5, d4, e6. But instead, he takes d5 was play, and now bishop f4 to um, prevent bishop d6. Because if you play knight c3 right away, he can play bishop d6, and you don't really have a good square for your bishop. And I've never played bishop e3. So knight f6, knight c3, bishop to d6, now queen d2, and c. The bishop's not there anymore, and so you both castle. Now the game actually starts, uh, and obviously the strategy is clear. Black wants to play b5, a5, uh, get the pieces going after that. Maybe he wants to play, instead of a5, maybe you could play b5, queen a5, b4, and then queen takes a2 is a, is a way to play. White will try to play for... Uh, h6 and g6 but obviously g6 first and then h6 so that because the thing is if you play g6 h6 first they just play g6 and block you um, it'll take one two three four five six to claim the initiative so let's see what happens f3 to prepare g4 and g4 right away okay so he moved his bishop again. That's a waste of time. But to justify it, he wants to play bishop takes g4. And I already know that's very an, a, a sound sacrifice. It's not a good one. And the reason why is because he wants to play knight here and break open my king queen side. But when the queen goes to d3 or even e3 e1 uh, there are enough resources defensively on the dark squares i still have this bishop for example and that could actually um hold my position to the very end when i'm winning because i'm up a piece so i take it obviously and now he plays knight to e4 the engine likes to play queen e1 here here's the idea queen a5 knight g2 obviously Rook e8, and now bishop to d2. You basically just hold the position. And uh, the game is pretty much won at this point. We just now this, and you're up a piece for a measly pawn. No, that's pretty good. I played queen e3, however. Um, it still defends against the knight of two fork. But I do agree that maybe uh, queen to e1 was better. For example, queen e1. Um, in the game, I played queen e3, he took, and then he played queen e5. If queen e1, he takes, takes queen a5, and 
in this position, I'm pretty sure you have rook to d3 here. What does the engine say? It says king b2. What a crazy move this. Because now queen b6 is the only check. And then just king a1, queen to a5, knight to e2 defends pretty well. What does it like about rook to d3? Queen to a2. So, yep. That's what I'm talking about. People know how to defend unless um, you know these types of moves. So obviously I still have to work on my defensive skills. Um, so again, this is just beautiful. That king b2 move defends everything. And here's why it works because the king is not under attack by any other piece. This is defended by the queen as well. I've talked in a previous video how if the king defends a square that's attacked twice by other pieces, it's a recipe for disaster. But here, the queen defends one, and so really, the only really the only piece is attacking is the knight. So this is easily defended by the king. That's cool, isn't it? Well, anyways, I played the worst move. And now I play c4, so it prevents queen to a3. Um, he still has queen takes a2, and the engine says that it's equal after moves like that. And he's up a pawn, but I do got the bishop pair, so it could be a fight, a tactic one, because I like having a bishop pair in these types of situations. But he played knight c3, which is not a good move. He attacks my rook and he attacks that pawn, but simply I can just now play. Uh, well, I have to tell you the move. Maybe you could try to pause the video and find it for yourself, but it's pretty easy to find. Rook to d3. Knight takes a2, and now king to b1. Although I think king to b2 is also worth considering. Actually, no. because of c3 check and after something like this, he forks you. Interesting, I, I never even considered that. All I know was that king to b1, he only has a, a check here, but here he doesn't really have a fork. He doesn't have c3 check, so obviously I could just take the queen. So that's interesting. He's threatening main and two, so I might just stop it. He has to go back, and I close out the center. This is a critical move. Closing out the center in a place like this would help me get all my forces in the game. When you're under attack, you need to keep everything closed and exchange pieces. Obviously, I can't allow something like pawn takes and knight to d5 or knight to d7, knight d6. And it's pretty bad, and he would have a open file for his rook. Not on the C file, let me remove that, but on the D file, and it's just not that good. So I close it up, very good. And I take away one piece, that was easy. He thinks he has an open file for attack, and that's true, but what's he gonna do? I just have rook to B3. There goes my knight, queen to f3. That's not really a good move. I don't know what he's trying to do with that pawn. I'm threatening queen takes f7 ideas here. I'm preventing any rook to f8 or rook to e7. And now I'm just attacking the king side. Okay, so this is a recipe for disaster here. He has to play rook g8. Um, Interesting, like, they're gonna play rookie seven. Hmm. I wonder what the engine thinks of rookie seven. That would have been really interesting. Oh no, it's it's um impossible because of bishop takes to g7 checkmate. So he has to play rook g8. It's forced. He has to defend g7. And now, what's the best move for white? I'll pause, uh, you should pause the video and then try to find it. 
Okay, so there's this checkmate pattern that I talked about, the epaulette. And so this one would be a half epaulette. I am threatening now at the rook h3, rook takes, and then queen to h5 checkmate. The only way to prevent this is queen to e8. I really thought about some interesting ideas here. So um, before I tell you what the next move I played was, you should try to pause the video and find it for yourself. Okay, so obviously this doesn't work. Rook takes, king takes, queen to h5 is the only move. Um, and then queen takes, queen loses. There's also something like rook takes, king takes, um, queen to f5 is the only other check, but it doesn't work for many reasons, such as that. The interesting idea I thought about was something like, um, well, um, I actually, I don't know. Um, that queen e8 move is too strong on this diagonal. So I had to play this, and now I don't really think there's any way to stop this. He played h5, and of course I took the pawn. But if h6, obviously this is checkmate, because the pawn can't take it because of the absolute pin on the pawn on g7. So h5, and now I'm just threatening checkmate. This is really bad for black. There's no way to defend this, so I think he resigns here. His name is Te Parto, which in Spanish means I split you. Clearly, I did the splitting here. Um, there's no need for unsound sacrifices like this. But it, um, it's interesting to note that I still didn't defend one. He still didn't make the most of it. So the key takeaways with this video is just that after this on sacrifice, you just gotta get all your pieces in the game. He does have some initiative here, but I just knew that I had to get my rook in the game like this. After that, it was it was easy. And that's it.